in the previous video clip, I just stripped down uh, Fabrice's um, implied volatility code that he had written in C++ and just isolated uh, the two functions here to estimate really the black shoals out from the implied vol the overall implied volatility function. Um, so at its very basic here we have a function or an algorithm that estimates norm normal cumulative probability. We also have a function that estimates black shoals which calls up normal cumulative probability. And then we have the main part of the program which uh, reports or prints out uh, the value of a put or a call. So if we change this back to C and come back to the debug window and close down the debug and run again. We should get 1045 for our estimate, okay, which we do. Okay, so that's fine. But the original code uh, changed slightly by me. Fabrice's original code actually uh, incorporated in not just cumulative normal probability and black shows, but also set out a function, a bisection function, in much the same way as we had done before. So essentially what the function does here is we're looking for implied volatility if um, it has to estimate uh, we take a, as before the order here is different we know what the value of these variables are we know the market value what we're trying to infer is the volatility consistent with a market price that we observe. So in this instance here, if we change this to 11, um, then the implied volatility would have been 21%. Okay, so using an implied volatility function in VBA, we, the, what we're looking for is we know these parameters, we know the maturity, we know the price of the option that trades in the market. What we're trying to infer is what value, what is the volatility level consistent with a market price of 11 for the call option, and it's higher, it's 21. Okay, so if we go back, so let's try that. Uh, we go back into C++, um, We'll run the code again. Let's take the code. If I copy out Fabrice now, make sure I put in that double forward slash. Otherwise, it causes problems. We copy the code. Go back into our program. We could say, no, we'll just paste over. Let's go remove what's there and then paste from scratch paste and then we look here to see if any issues arise typically if something was missing for instance the compiler will detect there's an issue so we get a little bit of red appearing if there's some kind of syntax issues or other mistakes in the code but the code has been already tested by Fabrice so it's good to go we just have to fire up and in this instance here let's say uh, let's take what we had started with before uh, if the option price if the call was trading for 11 what would be the implied volatility it would be 2146 try to remember that number and we go into um, our Excel into our uh, Visual Studio Express 2015 
we change the number here to 11. So that means that the market price of the call we're assuming is trading for the market in the market of, at 11. Um, otherwise, the parameter values are the same. We have an initial low guess for volatility and an initial high guess for volatility. In other words, this is close to way less than 1%. It's at 1 millionth of a percent. There's the actual number value. And here we have a double, so that's 700%. So let's run this and check this is the value consistent with okay so we have here 2146 2146 and if i had changed that to 11 you'd see we'd have 2146 here too okay so the values are consistent okay at least so that's some reassurance that we are on the right track so what this buy section function is actually doing is same as before we are looking we introduce a low value a and a high value for b of the volatility uh, given here as being less than way less than one percent and seven hundred percent so these are clearly values that don't normally apply seven hundred percent is very unusually high figure typically for equities uh, implied volatility it might be twenty percent thirty percent so 700% uh, should cover most scenarios and likewise volatility rarely falls to this level as well. Implied volatility uh, generally is not this low either. Uh, so we introduce these values. The function itself, okay, let's have a look. The bisection function. The starting point here is we take the market price okay so max we specify max iteration and a tolerance level uh, so there is convergence between the a and the b and the knockoff is between the value the difference between a and b as they run through the iterations shouldn't uh, doesn't have to be less than this value here so if you like it's a criterion for convergence and we declare this variable low C diff, high C diff. So in other words, we take the market price of 11 and we take away the black shoals value. And then we take the market price again, 11, and we take the black shoals value where A is the low would start off as the 0 0.00001 and the B is 7 b here is given us a 7 so very very low volatility very very high volatility now in principle this should be lower the black shoals value should be lower and this one should be higher the model price should be higher than the market price but if we had an instance that both were negative or both were positive then we should return negative 1 okay Otherwise, so negative one would mean that uh, we should probably go with a higher uh, than seven or lower than this value here. Otherwise, but the, those two values actually should uh, virtually incorporate all our, in practical terms, all um, our estimations, right? All practical situations. Uh, otherwise proceed with uh, setting up a loop and you'll keep doing that loop until 50,000 times so that's the maximum iteration and then we set out we take a plus b and we divide it by 2 so we start with 7 and a is ze almost 0 b is 7 if we divide that by 2 it becomes 3.5 3.5 gets written in here. This is the volatility. So the third one, two, three, four, five, the fifth parameter input in the Black Scholes model here. If we check the fifth one, two, three, four, five is the volatility input. 
So the first volatility figure here is 3.5, 350%. And we estimate, we ask, is the difference between if the mid CF, remember it's uh, that value, is developed here, so the market price minus the model price. And if the difference here is less than the toll, the toll here is the 0 0.001. So if the absolute value here of the mid dip, remember what that, the mid C dip is, if there's just a small difference between the price of the option, so if we took that average of 3.5 and put in, and it, if its value is exact, very close to the market price, then we should go directly here and pull out, take the 3.5 or the 350% as the volatility level. If it's not, then if the uh, this value here is positive, in other words, that the market price is higher than the model price, then A, the new A, in the next iteration, the new A should rise to 3.5. It should go up. If it wasn't higher, if the mid, if, uh, if the mid C dip was negative, then we should take B as the midpoint. In other words, the value of B should fall to 3.5. And then if you like going through the iteration or the loop again, we would start with zero plus or zero point zero 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 one, whatever that number is, plus the three point five.